to begin looking at the digestive system, we want to consider the broad range of functions that we associate with that system. This is a list of the functions we associate with the digestive organs. Obviously the digestive system is going to digest things, and we'll look a little bit more closely at how that digestion takes place. The digestive tract is a series of organs that food moves through as we take the nutrient molecules out of the food that we eat, and so we have to move it through. Those organs are going to require secreting digestive juices into the tract, and we'll have to absorb the nutrient molecules out of it. And at the end, we eliminate the undigestible material that we have. Digestion is breaking food down to its smallest parts, the nutrient molecules that we need in our body. And we do that through two methods. One, there's mechanical digestion, which is physically making smaller and smaller pieces of the food that we take in. And then chemical digestion, which is to get the food into solution and down to the nutrient molecule parts that we need to get into our body. This list represents three of the main examples of how we mechanically digest food. It's not necessarily a complete list, but this covers most of it. The first and probably most obvious part is chewing. When you put food in your mouth, you're going to break it down into smaller and smaller bits through the action of your teeth. When that food's swallowed, it moves down into your stomach, and mechanically the stomach churns the food back and forth, mixing it into a liquid and environment, which is going to liquefy the food. So we have liquefaction taking place in the stomach. And throughout the entire GI tract, propulsion is going to be moving the food along, but that's also going to mix it up to some degree. This image, which we'll look at at another point in the presentation with more detail, is showing how food moves along a tube like the esophagus. And the walls pinch in behind the food and push it along. As that happens, the food's going to necessarily be sort of mixed together as the parts of the food adjacent to the wall will sort of smear along within the wall, and what's inside the bolus of food will then sort of be pushed forward and eventually mix out to the outside edges, and everything will get mixed up as it's being moved along. Another figure that we'll look at later in this presentation shows a related form of propulsion where the walls are pinching in again, but here they're pinching in segments, and they alternate back and forth about where they're pinching, mixing the segments together. And in that is going to move the food along the length of the tube, along with other methods of propulsion. The other form of digestion is chemical digestion, getting the food stuff down to the chemicals that we need to absorb into our bodies. The first of this would be solvation, to dissolve the food into a water environment, which is different from liquefaction. Liquefaction is churning the food within a liquid solution to get it to the consistency of water. But at the chemical level, the chemicals dissolving into that water solution sometimes is all that's needed to get those chemicals into a usable form. If you eat something with salt on the outside, like a pretzel, for instance, the crystallized table salt, sodium chloride, as soon as that gets into your mouth, it will dissolve into the saliva, and the sodium ions and the chloride ions are at their basic level, and that's how we're going to use them in our body. When we need to break larger molecules down or have to use other means to get their constituent parts to break down, we use enzymes. And enzymes are proteins that catalyze reactions. We'll be looking more in depth at enzymes in a later part of this presentation. They are the primary means of chemical digestion of most everything except for the simple things that can just dissolve into solution. Now emulsification, the third one here, is actually not the same as the other two. It's here to help get hydrophobic molecules into solution so that enzymes can work on them and break them down into smaller parts. The hydrophobic molecules we're talking about here, of course, are lipids. Emulsification is just making lipids dissolve into a water solution. Now this is something that's fairly common, and you've probably done some emulsification in real life, besides what happens inside your digestive tract. If you've ever had oil and vinegar dressing, 
and you've shaken the bottle. That's emulsification. It's physically forcing oil droplets to be suspended in the water phase of the vinegar so that when you pour it out onto your salad, it's a fair mixture of the two. If you prefer the creamier types of salad dressing, then emulsification has been done chemically. The basis of creamy salad dressings is mayonnaise, and mayonnaise is just oil and eggs. Eggs have in them a water-based solution, which is essentially the white part of the egg, where there's a bunch of protein. And by mixing that with the oil, there's a molecule called lecithin that emulsifies the oils into the solution, and you get a consistent, creamy, homogenized mayonnaise. And then, depending on what you add to that, you're going to have ranch dressing, Thousand Islands, blue cheese, etc., etc. All of that depends on emulsification. In your body, there's specific agents that emulsify lipids as they pass through so that enzymes can break them down into the simplest lipid molecules that you need, which are fatty acids. And we'll talk about that emulsification when we talk about the function of the liver and the gallbladder later on. As I indicated earlier, propulsion is actually a means of mechanical digestion as well. Secretion is usually about secreting digestive juices, which are mostly based in water, into the digestive tract. And then absorption is pulling the nutrient molecules out of the food and getting it into our bloodstream. And then again, elimination is getting rid of the waste products that we no longer need. In a later section, we'll look more specifically at how we absorb the nutrients out of our digestive tract. This summary figure addresses the secretion and absorption of water in the system, which again, we'll get to later. Consider this question. When you feel that you've reached an answer, hit the next button to go into the next slide, which will reveal the correct answer. The chemical that's found naturally in eggs that acts as an emulsifying agent is lecithin. Presumably it helps to form the boundary between the white part of the egg, which is a water-based protein solution, and the yolk of the egg, which has some lipid-rich nutrient molecules in it. 